Is your router getting you down? Are you tired of babysitting your router during a cut? Well, we have the solution for you. The Speed Stop by Canova Woodworking. The Speed Stop is a game-changing revolution in speed-stopping technology. It is made from thermoform plastic, and it is built to last. This innovative device attaches to your router with a single drop of glue and will transform your milling by filling your heart with joy. Put your robot army back to work and make milling great again. Get yourself a speed stop today and stop speed changes in their tracks. Link in the description. Cyber Reef Guru and CRG Banks are not affiliated with Canova Woodworking or Speed Stop. We do not profit or benefit from Speed Stop. Your mileage may vary, void where prohibited. Hi, hello, I am the Cyber Reef Guru. Thank you so much for watching. Today I have a very exciting video. I got the opportunity to interview Derek and Kyle of Canova Woodworking. They are the inventors and the makers of the Speed Stop for the Makita router. So for those of you who have one of these routers with the Onefinity, you'll know that sometimes the speed will changes while you're doing a cut, which is not very great. And so Kyle and Derek came up with this super Super innovative, very elegant, simple solution to fix this. And I thought it was really neat. I reached out to them and they agreed to do the interview, which I think is very awesome of them. So thank you, Kyle and Derek, very much for doing the interview. So, all right, without further ado, let's go ahead and cut over to the video. Let's do the uh, interview and then I'll wrap it up at the end. All right, so today we have Kyle and we have Derek with us. Derek is, I, I would say, let's let's call him the inventor of the speed stop for the Makita for the Onefinity. Is that fair, Derek? That's fair enough. Yep. Yeah, right on. So what we're going to do today is I am going to pepper Derek and Kyle with a bunch of questions. And so I have it here. I, I haven't put it on my machine yet right here. So I got this package. If you guys are interested, you can order it from Etsy. I will leave a link down below. Uh, and I was really, first off, as a, another Etsy participant, Derek, thank you for the note. Melted my heart. I just want to tell you that. I think it's interesting what you got here. But I, <laughs> it's an ingenious little device right here. It uh, just attaches to your Makita and stops the, the speed wheel from spinning at high RPMs because you get a lot of uh, vibrations and it has a tendency not to keep its speed. And so a little alcohol pad to keep it going and then a little super glue here. So that's awesome. And the card there, this is also brilliant too, by the way. Thanks for that. So I'm going to launch into a couple questions here and we're going to dig into kind of what I would call the uh, what the brainchild here, which is Derek, uh, the mastermind, which might be Kyle. I don't know. We'll see. It's the other way around. Uh, you tell you guys tell me. Who formed the inspire? <laughs> inspire. All right. All right. So clearly, um, you're you're kind of. Uh, the reason that you did this is there's a not so awesome speed dial on the Makita, the new Makitas anyway. I had an old one, I never had this problem. The new ones, if you get high RPMs or even sometimes at low RPMs, uh, the dial starts moving and it changes the RPMs, which is not a terribly awesome thing to do when you're doing CNC. So um, I have to imagine you went through a couple different iterations of this design before you finally settled on this. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about this actual design in a couple more questions here because I'm really intrigued by it. But let's talk a little bit about whose idea it was, maybe some of the different designs that you, you, you came up with before you, got, before you settled on this one, which works, right? And maybe some things that you didn't, you found that didn't work very well or whatever, and how you finally narrowed down on the, on the actual design. So either Kyle or uh, Derek, whichever one. Well, it initially started, uh, I actually had it happen to myself and, you know, had thought about in my head how to kind of remedy it and went through the, the natural uh, progression of, you know, do I use some tape? Do I stick some toothpicks in it? And I ended up settling for what I was doing because I was in the middle of a curve when it did it and it surprised me after, you know, having my, uh, having my Onefinity and the Makita router for uh, about a month and a half. And all of a sudden it just started taking off and it climbed up in speed, uh, which is the opposite of what you had where it went down. And uh, so I ended up having to hold it in place for the rest of the curve and then uh, try to figure out what I was going to do. I ended up settling with like a dab of hot glue out of a hot glue gun, which worked fine for the, for the moment. And then I thought about, I was like, well, what if I want to change it? I got to peel it off, restick it. 
And I didn't want to go with the tape method because then you get dust in it and it just doesn't stick good. And I was not going to trust it for doing a, a long time carve. You know, some people do, you know, you know, over 24 hour carves with these things for the, the bigger, more intricate 3D stuff. And uh, it just, you know, thought about different things of what I could do. And, um, you know, Derek's here for the for the summer and uh, it just happened to be like, you know, what? I just don't have the time to put into it right now. I was like, Derek here's a problem. And I saw it posted in the Onefinity user form. I was like, look, it's a common problem. Hey, you got some extra time. Here's a good thing for you to wrap your head around, go out, just start getting some measurements, wrap your head around what you need to do. And, and, you know, you came out and you did a couple things. Yeah. So originally my original thought was we had it. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah, you can see it. So we were going to have it wrap up and around the dial and uh, put pressure on it, it would be uh, angled more back towards this. So it would put pressure on it and hold it in place. But we realized that that probably wouldn't work. And we came up with a better solution of having the teeth on it. So it would bite into the notches in it. So was this your idea or was this uh, inspiration from dad? We were brainstorming together. It's more of a group collaborative kind of thing. I and mean, he went out and did the initial measurements and started thinking about the, you know, something to push on the side, something to push on the top. Um, and I, I challenged him as, you know, he came up with different ideas. Is like, well, think about, you know, user, um, you know, function of how are they going to adjust it? If they want to adjust the dial, are they going to access it? Can they see the numbers and stuff like that? Where, you know, I've had more, you know, experience of you know doing product design and development stuff like that and, you know just wanted to see his brain churn on it and see what he would come up with giving him little nudges you know in the right direction um or what i thought was the right direction but we came up with a lot of good ideas together and it's more of more of, i say a team effort really but awesome well that's amazing and i, I look I, I think it's turned out really well i really do and so kind of pivoting to the next question i already i already sampled this a little bit but I'm a little bit of a geek for like nuance of uh, uh, attention to detail. I, I don't know why. Uh, I, I can't say that I'm OCD, but I do think I have a touch, right? So when I got the package in the mail, I thought it, I just it's branded, right? And I thought this was really, I don't know. I don't know why it never occurred to me to do something like this, but it didn't. So Kyle, I mean, like, was this, is this your idea? I know you have an Etsy shop. You saw other things other than the speed stop here. Like who came up with this? What was the, the kind of the the inspiration for for your branding and 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 all the work that you put into this packaging which i think is really fantastic well the the label that you you have there on the outside that's just a, a standard label that i use for anything i ship out of my shop um yeah i just kind of came up with it when i started kind of developing the you know the shop image and whatnot and uh actually just just kind of a little sidestep here the the name canova itself actually came from this guy back when he was probably four i was gonna say probably four years old or so i had uh kind of dabbled in the uh wood turning uh you know artisan wood turning with bowls and you know doing hand carved spoons and stuff like that and a bunch of like engraved glass and i was kind of thinking like oh what am i going to come up with a name for the business and i had a uh a nova dvr wood lathe so derek kind of put the the kyle and nova together to kind of come up with the yeah, to say a nonsense word, Canova, which is like, hey, yeah, that works. Let's go with it. That's brilliant. Uh, damn. So, like, since you were four, you got all this, like, little creative juices flowing. Oh, That's yeah. He's, yeah, he's a sponge. He just absorbed. Ever since he was uh, even younger than that, just absorbing anything mechanical. and Good. Good, yeah. So, so when I opened the package here, you know, I kind of just kind of dumped everything out on, on the counter upstairs in, in, in the kitchen. And... First off, it's really teeny, right? And I don't know what I was expecting. I really don't. But then I started looking at it, and I'm like, this is the coolest material I've ever seen. And the way that it's formed, I just, like, explain what it, like, what material it is, how you form it, how you cut it. And, and like, it just looks, it's so, to me, it looks so clean and well produced for kind of, like, an inspiration off the cuff. Just talk a little bit about, like, how you, how you, this is just amazing. <laughs> in my opinion <laughs> so it's abs plastic um from amazon actually it's a where did it come from it come from china right yeah yeah it's you know it's just regular abs sheet 
Mm-hmm. But black textured ABS yeah. plastic. Yeah, yeah. on one side smooth on the other. Okay. The smooth side had a um, plastic peel on it. Okay. And so you cu- do you cut it on the one Infinity? Is that how you yeah. got the shape? We cut out uh, what was it, 144 at a time. Yeah, it's one sheet. Yeah, it's like 16 by 12 ish. Right. You, you cut out 144 of them. You you clean them up, and then you you peel the plastic off and you clean them up, like scrape the outside of them, which there's no nubs on them or anything. And then um, we have this jig in the vise. What you do is you put the flat piece of plastic in the jig. Heat it up with the heat gun and then push it down like that so thermal forms and you let it cool and then it's just piece yeah. of the thing you have in your I caution you I think you're giving away all your trade secrets but yeah, I, I, I was curious how you got the how you got it formed. I was thinking that's maybe the way you did it but I wasn't but I wasn't sure. <laughs> we haven't filed the utility patent yet but now nah, there's no uh, no no plans for utility patent. Uh, well, so, I mean, you know, this is one of the things that I just think is just completely useful. Uh, you know, and I saw on the forum, there's a lot of people that have purchased them from you, which I think is really amazing. And I, I, I forget who it was. He's like, well, I bought three just in case I get another CNC or I lose one or it breaks or whatever. But I, so I, been, we talked earlier before the video started, I've been working on a project that has had a little bit of an epic fail. Stay tuned for a future video about that. But I needed this, but I didn't want to put it on because I wanted to do this video first, right? And so I was I was holding the dial for a while the other day, and I was a little bitter about that. So I was like, you know, another another couple of days, and, and we'll get this going. <laughs> All right, so uh, Kyle, as the kind of father working with your son, you know, to create something new, obviously you guys have this relationship that you've built to kind of dig in on, on these hard problems. I'm curious from Derek's perspective, you know, what was it like working with your dad? I mean, can you talk a, a, a little bit about that experience? Is this something you guys do frequently or is this uh, kind of a new experience for you guys? Obviously, it seems like since maybe the age of four, you know, maybe maybe there's been a partnership there that will continue on for years. But I, I just what was it like working with your dad? So, yeah, yeah, I've been working with my dad. Um, how old was I when we built that? sod buster tractor oh you're about three and a half so yeah we were about i was about three and a half in our basement we uh put together a souped up lawnmower basically and that you pull a, a weight with it see how much weight you can pull with it that's full-on competition garden class tractor pulling so did you take it to a tractor pull yeah at the age of three and a half no uh, he drove, he drove yeah it. i did it it took me back but that's what he does now as pretty much his main hobby. They, yep. they take tractors, they soup up the engines and, you know, same thing. The, the critical thinking, problem solving, where they look at the problem, try to brainstorm ideas and try to get an edge up on their, uh, you know, on their friends to, you know, try to get a couple inches more on their poles. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the basis of just, you know, the, the basic engineering problem solving, where you, you see a problem, you think about it, use your critical thinking skills and just, brainstorm ideas, implement, try, plan, do, check, act kind of mentality. And and ever since we've been working in the shop together and we just do a lot of things together, creating and making stuff. Well, that's amazing. So I'm going to go off script a little bit. And so Derek, any plans for a future in like engineering or manufacturing or is uh, there other grander plans? I have no idea what I'm going to do yet because I'm in so many, I'm in so many different things. Like I'm, I'm pretty into computers, building computers. I built a computer over the winter, and um, like I said, I'm in mechanics too. So I have no idea what field I'm going to go into. Well, there's a pretty good nexus of computers and mechanics and robotics and a variety of other things. So uh, uh, my son, who's almost getting ready to go to college now, he hasn't decided what he wants to do, but uh, he's suffering from the same problem. I would say, right? Uh, lots of different interests. Not, uh, not really sure we want to narrow in. And frankly, you know, you know, the first couple of years of college, I think, are about figuring out where you want to go anyway. So, I think that's okay. So uh, maybe by the time he's, he's our age, he'll decide what he really wants to do. Yeah, well, I, you know, I've had like four different careers, so <laughs> it's all okay. And I guess the, you know, I, I actually read this not so long ago. The, the days of the golden watch of retiring after 30 years from the same company are kind of over and kids expect yep. more. Yep. You, you build upon all your past experiences and your biggest failures are your greatest strengths and learning experiences. 
that's excellent advice. You all out there on internet land, you remember that. <laughs> all right, so almost we're almost near the end here. So Kyle, do you or Derek have any other special projects on the horizon, you know, CNC related or otherwise that maybe you want to talk about a little bit here or uh, discuss? I, I don't have a, a ton of things on the horizon. I'm kind of looking for that next challenge. <laughs> I do have a, a little bit of a side project that I'm working on with a with a buddy that uh, it's not necessarily related with the the one Finity CNC, but they're 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 actually maybe a utility patent in the future, in uh, in a Kickstarter campaign. But um, we got a little ways to go, but hopefully in a year's time, you know, we'll be seeing that and uh, getting it out there. But uh, what you got? Oh, I got a lot of stuff I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing specific, though. I'll, I'll go out. I'll go out in the middle of the day and start a project, and then decide that it's either I was shooting from the moon or it was <laughs> way too easy. And I finished in five minutes, but you know, I do all sorts of things, and I'll walk up to something one day and decide I want to do it. So. Yeah. So unfortunately, Derek, that sounds a lot like me. I start a lot of things. I don't finish very many of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> typical for our, our kind of personalities. Yeah. All right. So we're, we're nearing the end here. Uh, I would say final question before we kind of go into the uh, free form, you know, is there any advice in your experience, Kyle and Derek with using the one infinity that you maybe want to give to the one infinity community or the broader kind of CNC community about, you know, lessons learned, things that you have observed, you know, uh, things to avoid, things to do, uh, however you want to characterize it, it's kind of an open, open-ended question. Uh, I would have to say for, you know, one Finity forum kind of stuff, um, do a dry run with your tool, with your Z home a little bit higher, uh, just to, just to do some clearance checks. It, I learned that back when I uh, worked in the industry where I did maintenance on CNC lathes and mills. You don't want to crash. <laughs> Just just run the program, do a do an error check on it. I ended up actually crashing my JTEC laser last night because I made the mistake of saving the uh, toolpath as a regular Onefinity toolpath instead of the laser, so it might jam right down in. Um, but uh, biggest thing is, you know, come up with a plan, brainstorm it. Don't be afraid to take chances. Um, you know, don't, don't think that it's, it's that complicated. You just got to do some critical thinking, brainstorming and have it, have a decent plan. That's great advice. Derek, anything to add? Are you, are you using the one affinity at all? And other than making the, the lovely uh, speed stops here? Um, I'll help him with stuff. Um, he kind of controls it most of the time. He, he's still learning it. You know, everybody, it's a learning experience. Everybody's figuring it out. There, there is plans to get them up to speed on the setups and stuff like that after stuff's proven out. And, you know, anybody hates to crash their baby, but uh, he's he's a pretty uh, pretty competent, capable guy with good aptitude. I will have no problem picking it up. But uh, I've been watching. He, he's got a 3D printer that he uses and, you know, does stuff. So he, he's got that mindset. It's just uh, I'm still kicking the tires on it, getting used to it myself. So. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. Know this is my third CNC, and uh, none of them have been this capable. So I'm still in the mindset of a less capable machine, and you know I, I got to kind of get myself in a mindset where I can really push the machine a lot harder than I think I've been uh, willing to do. And I was doing that just the other day where I was using too conservative of a uh, feeds and speeds. That thing is impressive. I'm so glad that I watched. Uh, it, we were talking earlier about the you know the kind of the the, the jovial. Uh, video that we made about the the actual speed stop that was kind of inspired by ben meyer's video about him kind of kicking his old cnc to the side and going with the one finity and i tell you what i think it handle a lot more than people think it can yeah i actually um so i'm sitting here right now uh, t true story so so i was doing one of my videos i was doing the the videos on speeds and feeds and i i crashed the I have a fly cutter to flatten the wood, right? And I crashed it into the board because I still don't know why. And unfortunately, my, my butt was in the way of the camera, so I have no video of exactly what happened. But it actually blew the fuse on the outlet that I had, and the machine kept moving. The router stopped, and the machine tried to push the router through the material without the bit spinning. I watched that video, yeah. <laughs> I showed a little bit of slow motion of it, and you can see the entire spindle oh, yeah. twist. 
I haven't yet gone back to see if it's still trammed because I am a little curious about that. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah, the machine is definitely impressive. And now with the new upgrades, I think it's going to be even more impressive. I, I hope that I uh, at some point have the space to uh, make 48 inches wide, although I will uh, freely admit the lovely significant we'll other. a little bit of space on that side. Yeah. So I, I was actually, so I have a, this was intended to be my soldering station where I was going to do all my electronic work, but unfortunately it ended up over here. Uh, unfortunately, but so that's actually open space technically, although that's where my epoxy station is, which maybe I should stop using epoxy based on my past it's experience. It's in your future. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But uh, with the flip top now, I think I might actually be able to put it in the garage, right? And so that's all things to consider. It's just, you know, out here on the East Coast, there's only maybe four or five months out of the year where doing work in the garage is pleasurable, right? So without a mini split or some sort of conditioning or heating out there, so... Yeah, well, it's like earlier, we had a fan in the door trying to get some cool air in here as the sun's going down. And then uh, back when I got mine in uh, March, I had an electric heater out here trying to keep it somewhat above 40 when it was zero degrees outside. Yeah, exactly. And I, I mean, I've had the CNC down here in my office for a long, long time now. I just, if anyone has the opportunity, I have a bunch of videos about how I remodeled my office and did all this configuration, but I specifically designed it to have the CNC in that corner. So um, um, I guess I'm blessed to have the opportunity to design my office around my CNC. <laughs> yeah, definitely a lot of work in the in the garage. Anyway, so I think it's been wonderful. Thank you guys so much for, for dialing in and doing this interview. If anyone's interested, I will leave a link. What did I do with the Speedstop? Here we go. I will leave a link in the video description down below if anyone wants to purchase Speedstop. I think it's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's the, it's, I'm impressed by the simplicity of the entire thing. And that's exactly what I was steering him towards is the it, keep it simple it's well and so you know it's I imminently manufacturable right but the the utility is just like top notch right so i really again appreciate it thank you guys so much for doing this and uh with that we will uh we'll wrap this one up hope we'll see you guys soon on another video well that was the video i hoped you enjoyed it it was a lot of fun to make it was a little hard to edit due to the call quality but i did learn some lessons on the zoom calls that is definitely best to record your screen as well as relying on the Zoom video because I think it produced better video and it wasn't jumping between me and them all the time. I'd like to thank Kyle and Derek for doing the interview. It was very gracious of them and so kudos to them for not only making a great product but being willing to do the interview. I think it was, I think it turned out very well. So if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing. Ring that bell, very important these days. If you're not already following me on Instagram, please consider doing so. That's where I post pictures of projects like this for future videos. All right, once again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for getting this far. And don't forget to be inspired.